The number of man is the number of the beast. The mother of all demons is matter, forbidden scriptures, what they don't want you to know. Everything you think you knew was a lie. Welcome to the new New World Order where they love you so much. First of all, what you can see here is the carbon atom, which is the majority of what makes up your physical meat suit, your meat sack. Hello. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Now, if you read what the Bible says about the man, about the number of man, and let's go right here to the, let's go to the actual literal translation, according to Young's. Here is the wisdom. He who is having the understanding, let him count the number of the beast for the number of a man it is, and its number is 666. And you can go to the New International Version, and it says basically the same thing. You can go to the King James Version, the official authorized King James Version, that is. So as you can see right here, your meat suit is talked about in Revelation, and you're the beast, whether you like it or not. Now, does that mean that it's a bad thing? Does that mean all beasts are bad? Absolutely not. There's a reason for wolves. There's a reason for sheep. It's the wolves in sheep's clothing you have to keep an eye out for. And once again, just read any of the um, New Testament versions, even the, the watered-down ones. And it says specifically, the number of a man is the number of the beast, 666. Now, if you want to read some less... How do I put this? If you want to read some scriptures that are... <laughs> how do I not piss people off here? I don't think it's going to happen. Well, if you want to read a different version of religion and the God that helped create you and your current version your current form, the Gnostic texts, the Nag Hammadi scriptures, have a completely different spin on many of the characters that are discussed, the kings and queens and aristocrats and bloodlines and heroes and everybody in between, the good guys, the bad guys, etc. If you read the Nag Hammadi scriptures, just a completely different spin on spirituality. But it talks about how humanity was created by demons and archons. Right here, you can read all about it, the secret book of John. I've read this to you guys before, but I think it's important to read it again now. And it also correlates to the number of man, 666, carbon, Adam. Adam, Adam, hello. Humanity begins. Y'all the bot, the chief ruler. And then all of his minions gather together. There's construction of the human body. And you can see here it talks about the demons. The host of demons took these substances from the powers to create the limbs and the body itself they put the parts together and coordinated them so demons gathered the substances and put together you and anybody that you know pretty much i mean unless they're like some type of outer dimensional being that manifests via dense light form or something like that which it could be i mean they're probably out there don't get me wrong i'm sure they are i'm almost certain they are right here here it is ladies and gentlemen the mother stands among them Anortho, Trasae, she is unlimited. She mixes with all of them. She is matter, and they are nourished by her. She is the chief demon. The four chief demons are... Wow, look at that. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce those names. And then, from those four demons come passions. Hello. So, as you can see, the mother of demons is the one that is matter. And actually, if I read the version, a newer version that's been translated, let me find it real quick. Secret Book of John. Here we go. Yeah, I'll open that up pretty quick. Shapeshifters. Okay, y'all the boss. Y'all the Baoth and his world order. All right. Still going, still going. Here we go. Oh, wow. You guys want to know what demon created the, uh... No. No, I'm not gonna go there. Not gonna go there. Here we go. The source of the demons that are in the entire body is divided into four. Heat, cold, wetness, dryness. And the mother of them all is matter. Okay, so the source of the demons that are in the entire body is divided into four. Heat, cold, wetness, dryness. And the mother of them all is matter. So the mother of all of the four parts of the entire body here we go. Matter. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, matter. Does it really matter? Well, what kind of matter are you talking about? Are you talking about my matter or your matter or the matter in between this matter? Or that other matter that somebody had the other day? 
Well, the mother of all these, the mother. Wow, okay. So it gets even deeper, ladies and gentlemen. The clock that never ends. So, and the mother of them all is matter. The one who is lord over heat is Flo... Floxofa, Floxofa, Floxofa. And one who is lord over cold is Arurothos. And one who is lord over what is dry is Aramachio, or Aramacho. The one who is lord over wetness is Athruro. And that's what it says in the newer version here. And hopefully I got, you know, I mean, I'm sure I said that. Oh, yeah, that was spot on. You guys know it. Just go with it. But after that, the mother of all those, Anorthrochaz, stands in the midst of them, for she is unlimited and mingles with them all. She is matter, and by her they are nourished, the four principal demons. So she, she nourishes the four principal demons. The matter, you know, matter, you. So, does that mean you're bad? No, that doesn't mean you're bad. Does that mean... No, let's get into demon here for a minute. Like, how deep do you want to go with a demon? Well, this could be a wordplay, because according to demon, the D-A-E-M-O-N version, daemon, daemon, is actually considered by some to be their guardian angel, or one of their guardians, or a spirit guide. You can go back to Plato, Socrates, a tradition of Greek thought which found agreement in the mind of Plato was of a daemon which existed within a person from their birth and that each individual was obtained by a singular daemon prior to their birth. Not demon, but daemon. And then now, if you say daemon, people would think of demon most of the time. They wouldn't even know the difference. What is real, what isn't, what hasn't been mixed, what hasn't been spun? The Emerald Tablets of Thoth, Toth, Thoth, does a fantastic job, I think, of explaining these manipulators, these serpents behind the scenes. Here you go, right here. In Plato's Symposium, the priestess, Diotima, teaches Socrates that love is not a deity, but rather a great daemon. She goes on to explain that everything daemonic is between divine and mortal. And she describes daemons as interpreting and transporting human things to the gods and divine things to men. Hmm. That's very interesting. Now let's take this a step further. This is where, you know, 666, CERN, right? Is it bad? Is it evil? Well, that's for you to decide. I don't think that 666 is evil unless your intent is evil. It's just like a car. You can use a car to get to work. You can use a car to take a nice road trip. You can use a car to uh, do very nefarious things as well. So what are you going to do? What's your intentions? What are you? What is your will? What is your purpose? What are you doing here? Let's get real deep. The cycle of suffering, the cycle of samsara. The six states of existence, the six roads of reincarnation, the six paths of transmigration, the six realms of samsara, the six karmic realms of rebirth, the six directions of reincarnation, the six destinies, the will of life. Great website. Read all about it. Onmarkproductions.com. I'll leave the link in the video description box. The Buddhist will of eight spokes. When I did some research, this connects to Anu, the Sumerian language, the old school Sumerian as far back as they can get, so at least some of the, re the, I shouldn't say as far back as they can get some of the recent, as far back as they can get some of the tablets that we recently have access to, you can see the eight-pointed, you call it an eight-pointed star, I guess, Anu, looks very similar to this Buddhist will of life here. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the Bhava Kakra de um, denotes the continuality of becoming, reincarnating, one of realm, certain realms of existence. There's several of them, but it talks about the different Right here, look at this. I want to click in on this because this picture, he's pointing at the moon. Buddha's pointing at the moon as a way out. So if you can get outside of these karmic wills and destinies, and then Buddha's pointing to the moon. But what about the Egyptians being connected to the Orion belt, different stars, the sun worship that goes on today with many religions, whether it's Christianity or other various forms of sun, soul, sun worship, celestial worship, harnessing the stars' energies, as above, so below, mimicking the stars. The sun is referred to as the savior. Now, why is it in these Tibetan teachings they're referring to the moon as an escape, not the sun? I think that's pretty interesting. And this is just describing the realms of rebirth. And I want to talk about the six realms, because there's six realms of rebirth. You've got the God realm. 
the demon, anti-god, or demi-god realm, the human realm, the animal realm, the hungry ghost realm, and the hell realm. And you'll find these different realms throughout various cultures, throughout various parts of the world, mainly Eastern. But if you look at the, the hidden underlying theme, you'll find this stuff from the Middle East, you'll find it Greek, Western cultures, it's all over the place. Certain numbers I find, like 6 and 10 and 42, are very, they're, they're often reoccurring in many of these prophecies and scriptures and writings. And the, the Hungry Ghost Realm, this is an image of a 12th century painting from Kyoto, Japan. Very frightening indeed to think about how dark and cold and sad some of these different realms could possibly be. And do you think they were on to something? Or do you think that somebody just made something up and everybody went with it? Okay, yeah, that sounds good. We'll just, we'll just go with what that guy's saying. Now, have you guys heard of the magic square of the sun? Go to thoughtco.com, magic square of the sun, soul. The numbers associated with the sun are 6, 36, 111, and 666. Threefold, 666. The number of man, the number of the beast. So does that mean the sun is evil too? Well then... How are we going to survive without the sun? Are we going to harness energy from other stars? Are we going to harness our own solar internal energy? How are we going to grow food? How are animals going to live? How is anything going to survive without the sun energy reaching the earth? And then what happens when deities or people or demigods take over the symbol of a sun or represent and say, hey, that's mine. You can't have that. If you worship that, then you worship me. Just a total mind screw on people. And that can go on for eons and then they can harness the energy in certain levels what about the six corporations that control over 90 percent of the media read all about it businessinsider.com ge news corp disney viacom time warner cbs you can see right here the eight pointed star of inanna i feel looks ishtar wonder woman i think looks similar to the will of um not that will, not the Baba Cockroach, but right down here. Where is it? Oh, I just had it up there. All right, we'll find it again in a minute. You know, it kind of looks like a, a steering wheel of a boat, of a vessel on the water. Here's the on, God, heaven, eight-pointed star, eight-pointed symbol right here, at least 3,000 B.C. What is this right here? This is a 16-pointed star. I don't know what this reference is. I'm going to close out with this. Take a look at... Let me do this real quick. There we go. All right. Take a look at the... In closing, this is going to be for the next podcast. You see the, the spaceship, Nibiru, I feel, probably was a spaceship. And it looks like Anu, Enki, and Enlil is in the spaceship underneath the crescent moon. Usually you just see Anu up there. This one you see three. That's why I think it's Anu, Enki, Enlil coming down from the stars. And recently saw a great film. I don't want to give it away, but it was off the charts. Absolutely loved it. I'm even hanging on to the collector's tickets, Valerian. It had its cheesy moments, but it also had some, some throwback Star Wars stuff. Empire Strikes Back, the sound effects. The One of the ships looks very similar to the Millennium Falcon. And, I mean, it had some, some really cool sinks and links. I would also like to say that the, uh, there's, and I'm not going to give too much away here, guys. So don't worry about it. I mean, if you need to take, if you don't want to hear anything about it, you want to go see it or whatever, but just, I'm just adding to how cool it is. But a main part of the film is the space station that's created and beings from all over the universe start being a part of it and it branches off. I'm not giving away anything more than what you're going to see in a trailer. So you don't need to get upset or anything. So this the space station gets so big on Earth, and so many people start joining it in all these different races, that it has to break off, otherwise it's just going to mess up the orbit of the planet. So it branches off, takes off into space, you know, and, and more races continue to build upon it and connect. A planet gets affected by other people's space wars. And debris falls on the planet and destroys the planet from a space war going on above. I feel like that might have been... If there was a Tiamat, because it was a water world, I feel that that could have very well been linking that somehow. The Sumerian tablets that you read will be very... Inter 
the storyline is intertwined in that film. So definitely watch it. You'll pick up a ton of synchronicities. Very, very, very good film. So just to kind of give a quick sum of the, the video here, what do we talk about? The number of man is the number of the beast, the carbon atom, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. The humans created by demons and archons, the wordplay on daemon, the six cycles of Samara, the six cycles of consciousness, which I didn't even get into the six cycles of consciousness. That's why I'm glad I went back there. This is something I feel is important. Let's talk about the six cycles of... Taking cliff notes now, guys. Where is it? Here we go. Okay. You've got the different levels, like the demigod realm, the god realm, the human realm, the animal realm, the wandering ghost realm, and the hell realm. So the demigod realm. What if the Anunnaki came from the demigod realm? And they're doing their best to keep that place their plane of existence as least populated as possible. You know, population control. You know, right here, the hell realm, the hungry ghost realm, the animal realm, the human realm, the demigod realm, the god realm. You'll find these throughout history, throughout different cultures. There's a few more realms according to some Buddhist teachings. There's ten. But six is a the main theme here, I've noticed. Definitely support our sponsors. Right now, Tiger Stream is offering a $75 off Leak Project promo code. Click the link, video description box. How much money would it save you if you were able to cut your cable bill or satellite bill? And how cool would it be if you had more options than before? And how great would it be to be able to use, like, Android software, you know, play Android games on your big screen TV as well? Do you like sports? Do you like TV? Do you like movies? Do you like streaming? Check it out, Tiger Stream. Also, Quick Bivy. They're cheap. You got to have one of these things. And your survival kit, your bug out bag, your camp pack, your glove box, your tool set. Thank you for being here. Be excellent to each other. Question everything. And, of course, be the change you want to see. Na -na 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 -na.